So hello everyone. So in this presentation, so we will introduce about uh, new packet logging API in Neutron and uh, how to gather and virtualize logs uh, collaboration with Monasca project. So uh, let, uh, let us introduce ourselves. So I'm Yushiro Furukawa, uh, working at Fujitsu. And uh, <clears throat> I'm a senior uh, software engineer and currently uh, focusing, mainly focusing on Neutron and uh, Neutron Firewall as a service project. Okay. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Thank, uh, thank you uh, for being here. Uh, I'm Ann. I'm uh, working uh, on, I have been working on OpenStack uh, project uh, two years uh, more than two years, and currently I'm developing uh, log in for security group and Pagua. My name is Vitek Bedek, and I'm a senior developer at Fujitsu EST in Munich, Germany. Uh, I work on Monasca. So here is uh, today's agenda. Uh, okay, so let's start. Uh, with overview. First, I'm actively working on network packet logging development, and the things I'll explain today are subject to change. Uh, let me explain why I started the development briefly. So I'm a networking guy and mainly worked on troubleshooting on network-related problems, uh, correcting and monitoring and analyzing network packets is obviously very important for troubleshooting. Uh, we collect the packet data, data from physical network switches and routers in on-premise network environment. In virtualized network environment, we can also collect the data from software network functionalities as well, such as uh, virtual switches, uh, virtual routers, and so on. Actually, uh, there are some advantages. One example is uh, because it's vendor neutral we can always get the data in the same format with the same operation. And that makes it much easier for us to troubleshoot problems. And the, the goal of the development uh, <clears throat> is provide a framework to collect network packet <coughs> logs for OpenStack. So in packet logging API, so there are some software network functionalities. I'm focusing on the filtering functionalities first, such as a security group and firewall. Uh, since security group is the de facto filtering functionality for open, OpenStack, that, that's the starter. We just start. Now we can collect network packet logs, but also uh, need to organize the logs. The logs are stored in different files on different servers. Gathering and integrating them is a painful job and take a lot of time. We'll explain how we can address the issue. So Neutron, uh, that's, uh, I'm focusing uh, packet logging API can solve the correct packet logs and store uh, log data. Neutron can achieve that. So uh, also, since log data are stored <coughs> in host servers, 
project users or tenant users cannot access log data. So we also need a mean to provide the data, that data to users. So the, in many uh, methodologies exist, but uh, the one of the example is the to collaborating with Monasca. Now, uh, let me explain how to collect logs. So, uh, before starting this uh, section, so let's revisit the basics for security group and firewall. So, security group is the uh, <coughs> fact, uh, security functionalities in Neutron, and this it filters uh, ingress, egress packets. And security groups are, uh, are attached on the neutron port. And security group has uh, many of security group rules uses uh, like a uh, white list and for filtering. And it provides a stateful uh, based uh, following uh, background technologies. The first is the open vSearch, and the other is the uh, IP tables on the Linux bridge. So the background technology of uh, security group is uh, currently uh, we can we have two two options. First is the open vSearch, and the, the other is the Linux bridge. So just a hybrid configuration will be uh, it de deprecated for some reason. So now uh, now open vSearch is the default uh, configuration called a native open vSearch firewall driver. So the security group is the uh, flow rules of the open vSearch for each OBS port. So that uh, in infrastructure environment, so you can confirm the <coughs> following command, so OBS, OFCTL, dump flow, or something. You can, you can confirm the OBS flows that is a security group. And the firewall, uh, especially uh, I'm talking now is the firewall as a service v, v1. So this is uh, filters ingress, egress packets. So this is the same as security group. And this, on the other hand, uh, security groups work on port However, the firewall as a service V1 works on the virtual router, and it uses the white, white list and black list for filtering. And it's also a stateful based on IP tables. So the difference uh, with the security group is uh, difference between fire security group and firewall is the firewall can realize a multiple layer protection. So firewall can prevent unnecessary packets from entering the internal network. That prevents the packets from eating bandwidth. That's why uh, firewall is, uh, auto is uh, realized in neutral network. So virtual router is uh, a background of IP tables. So note that this is only a uh, this is a firewall as a service V1. Uh, now we our firewall community is developing a firewall as a service V2, and the <coughs> sorry, firewall V2 uh, can <coughs> can work not only virtual routers but also a VM port like security group. So the, this slide is the how log is collected in accept blue. So the, as I explained uh, uh, previous page, security group is the uh, rule of the uh, open open flow rule. So the how we can log correct a log 
in the, this is a simple, so just insert a new flow loop for logging into an uh, integration bridge called BRInt. <coughs> so if loop is matched, the packet will be sent to OBS controller and parsed and stored uh, into log file. For, uh, for example, so slash var slash leave slash syslog or somewhere. This is an example for uh, security group loop uh, allows port uh, 20 to like SSH port ingress loop. In this case, the following loop are inserted in OBS uh, VRint. <laughs> and okay, the on the other hand, uh, drop loop. In this rule, uh, this is the same approach. This rule, uh, insert uh, drop packet, the following rule will be inserted. So, first is the uh, uh, CD mark 0x1, and the uh, other rule is a CT state is EST. So, two rules are inserted. So, the first line means the log drop flow for invalid packets. And the other, next, next line is the log drop flow for packets and match any SG rules. As a result, uh, dropped packet will be captured and sent to the o, uh, open flow controllers. So now this section will explain the how to set up packet logging API. <laughs> so here is an architecture of uh, packet logging API. So as mentioned at the beginning of this presentation, implementation, implementation is being discussed now. So I will skip the part, uh, neutron, neutron servers in implementation, this is a now uh, under this discussion, so I will skip it. So just, uh, however, the, the less API definitions are uh, totally uh, approved and agreed from our course. So uh, I just focus on the how to use a CLI. Okay. So here is a less API definition for packet logging API. So, but uh, I think it it is not not easy to explain the how to how to use the less API directory. So just foc uh, focusing on the how to use the CLI. Okay. So how we can uh, enable uh, packet logging. At first, we can uh, we can provide the C, uh, OpenStack client, and uh, uh, you can check the what neutron resource can be uh, configured for logging, and you can you can check this command OpenStack network log supported list. Uh, <coughs> if you if you execute this command the supported list for logging will be returned. So the first, uh, as I explained initially, so security group is the first target for logging. So now uh, we can support a security group. So after checking that, uh, uh, let's begin to set up security group for logging. So there is some three <coughs> patterns I will introduce. First creates a logging resource with security group ID for drop event. So if you specify, uh, if you want to uh, correct the logging for security group SG1, you can, you can configure the, this command and you should create a logging resource at first and specify three points. Uh, first is uh, what event you want to drop, uh, you want to collect drop event, a dro drop event, and accept event, and all event. So the, 
this is a event drop. And the resource type, what resource are you going to uh, correct the log? So the currently supported list is only security <laughs> group. So the resource type to specify sec uh, resource type uh, is security group. And the resource option, what do you want to uh, correct log? So you can specify SG1. As a result, uh, target for logging is just configured for SG1. On the other hand, so if you want to correct the logs, uh, especially uh, focusing on VM2, VM, VM, VM sharp 2. So in this case, you can specify a target option and you can specify port, port ID. As a result, uh, SG1 and SG2 are target for logging, are configured for logging. And the uh, third case, uh, create logging resource for only VM ship 1 and SG1. In this case, so the difference of the first case is uh, not SG1, but SG1 on port A. In this case, you can specify a resource option and target option, the combination. And SG, specify resource SG1 and target uh, port B. As a result, you can specify uh, only SG1 on port A. So uh, after creating the logging resource, now we can start, start logging. And if you'd like to stop logging, uh, change the value of the enabled field to false. So uh, such a command. So disable log, you can stop the correct, uh, correct logging. If you start continue to logging, you can uh, execute the enable log option. You can start. Now, uh, sorry, this is a so small character, but uh, this is a current actual packet log date detailed. So in this part, uh, you, can, you can check the following information. So date and packet option, accept or dropped, and the project ID, so, and the log resource ID. So if, uh, in order to separate uh, via project, uh, project ID is necessary. So in, uh, in order to show multi-tenancy for log data, uh, project ID uh, can be used for uh, selecting each project. And uh, this is the uh, actual packet data. data. So IPv4, uh, source IP, and source MAC, and destination MAC, and source port, and protocols. This is an uh, actual packet data data. Currently, uh, log format is uh, under discussing, so maybe it will be a little bit changed. But uh, currently, uh, all of the data, I can, uh, we can output it. So the, OK, I just explained uh, some REST API uh, sending information into the Neutron server. So now, uh, to organize this log data, we will introduce a way using Monasca. So in this, this part. So Vitek, uh, what is going on? Thank you, Yoshido. Yeah, right. So after you have saved the Neutron logs to the, to the file, you perhaps want to persist uh, these logs in the, in the database to be able to efficiently search, analyze, and visualize this data. And that's where Monasca comes in handy. It uh, offers a comprehensive solution for log management. So Monasca is monitoring and logging as a service solution. And uh, logging as a part of it uh, fills here our, our goal. So the goal of uh, 
adding logging management to Monasca was to uh, to bring a uh, standardized uh, solution which could replace uh, vendor-specific uh, tools which are widely used. Um, we base on uh, state-of-the-art open source uh, solution Elk stack, but we add a whole uh, um, bunch of uh, values to, to, um, to Elk. So as first, uh, we offer logging as a service. So it is a single point where other projects, as for example in our use case Neutron, can integrate and uh, post the, uh, the logs to the service. We bring authentication. Um, the agents have to authenticate with Keystone and then send the, the token to, to the log API. And uh, the, the logs are separated by the by the project, so we have multi-tenancy and we have so-called cross-tenancy, so we, the agents are also able to send the logs on behalf of another project. We offer role-based access control to centralized logging, so uh, the administrator can control which users get access to the logs. Through the use of uh, Kafka, we get greater scalability and performance. And at last but not least, uh, through the integration with other Monasca components, we offer thresholding and alerting based on logs. Let's have a short overview of the, of the architecture of Monasca logging feature. So um, the agents are responsible for collecting uh, the logs. It authenticates with Keystone, adds the token, to the request and sends it to, to the lock API. The lock API authorizes the request, validates the input, validates the, the, the log, validates the dimensions, takes the project ID from the token and adds it to the, to the lock event. It is then sent to, to the message queue, which is in Monasca commonly Kafka, Apache Kafka. And these components at the bottom are based on Logstash. Transformer is uh, responsible for parsing uh, common patterns, like, for example, uh, severity of the log. Log metrics can be used to generate uh, the metrics from the logs, and persister persists the, the logs to the database, which is Elasticsearch. As I said before, we separate each project logs to, us, to, to, to its own index, so it makes it easier to filter them. And, and um, for, for visualization, we use Kibana, which is extended with our multi-tenancy plugin. It is responsible for two things. First, uh, authorization of the request, so the, the user has to have uh, given role to, to be able to access the logs. And secondly, uh, we filter the request only to given projects, so the user from one project cannot see the logs from the other one. With the dashed lines, I have uh, marked here that the, there is a new development from uh, the company called Stack HPC from, from UK. They started developing query API for, for the logs and also um, they are extending the Monasca data source uh, to support mm -hmm. logs so that you will be able to visualize logs and metrics in one Grafana dashboard. Right, and uh, one more feature I would like to, to show in the context of our use case is the cross-tenant log submission. So we have the agent, which uh, collects the, the logs from, from Neutron. It authenticates with, with Keystone, as I said, um, but it also has the logic to detect that, oops, that every of these individual log entries actually belongs to a different project. So we add that query parameter, tenant ID, and we are sending 
the logs on behalf of this project. They are then separated so that every user from every project uh, can see their logs. And that's all from my side. I will now hand over to Anne, okay. who, has presented, who has prepared the demo. OK. Uh, well, uh, as we mentioned uh, uh, above, operator will start or stop uh, collect packet log, and then Monarca, and then Monarca will uh, will collect data and show to each project. In fact, uh, I really want to give you demo directly, but it takes. Uh, a long, long time. Uh, so I have, uh, uh, so I have um, the cost, uh, demo uh, video. You can uh, visit uh, here. You can visit the YouTube link. <coughs> and uh, if you uh, in interesting with local API, uh, please visit me, and I do a demo uh, later and finally about uh, future plan. So now, uh, future plan, uh, we are targeting wind pike cycle, but uh, just uh, we, we like to do our best. So in neutron side, uh, currently our logging spec is uh, just pending at blue bar. So just a uh, start continuing it, so I uh, need to have a blue bar, but uh, in, the, in this cycle, uh, we can su support the security group first, and the uh, next cycle gets uh, more uh, logs, like firewall is the first, and uh, some virtual router. Uh, if, if the VM can go to the internet, so just a private uh, SNAP and NAPT, uh, will be changed. So the SNAP log is uh, some necess uh, important for the traceability uh, from the from in from internal to the external, or ex from external to internal. So just the traceability uh, regarding the traceability. So SNAP uh, logging is necessary, and the load balancer as a service and VPN. So, and the Monas uh, regarding the Monasca side, and uh, integrate with the Monasca analytics for uh, anomaly uh, detection. So, okay, that's all the, our presentation. Thank you for listening. <laughs>